10 Reasons Why Images Fail to Store to Packs. It's 4.59 p.m. and you're ready to head out the door. Shift is over, you're throwing your jacket on, ready for Friday night. Then bam, the dreaded sound. Every support IT analyst nightmare. It's the sound of that mind-numbing beep you've grown to loathe. Incoming incident, a support ticket has landed in your queue, prompting the most awful noise from your phone. The incident? Technologists have trouble storing images from an MRI modality to PAX. We've all experienced these last-minute tickets. As a PAX administrator, it's on you to resolve it. In this video, we'll navigate through the troubleshooting steps, 10 step-by-step -step fixes when a modality cannot store to PAX. This is Erin from PAX Bootcamp, and we're going to review 10 reasons why images may fail when storing to PAX. There are many reasons why a DICOM store operation may fail when sending images from a modality to the picture archiving and communication system. This module will explore 10 of the most common ones. By understanding these reasons, you can better troubleshoot these types of support tickets in your facility. You can also take additional steps to prevent these failures to ensure that your data is successfully transmitted between modalities and packs. There are so many possibilities. Sometimes the problem may be with the modality itself, such as a power outage or malfunction. In other cases, the problem may be with the PAX server or network connection. Either way, it's up to you to resolve. The best way to troubleshoot is to start with the most simple and basic possibilities, then work your way to the more advanced issues. In this scenario, the techs confirmed that they are able to view the images on the workstation that's connected to the MR. This confirms images have been acquired on the MR modality's local computer. However, they are unable to send the images from this workstation to PAX. It was working earlier today, but not sending now. Here are the 10 possible reasons why the DICOM images may not store to PAX. 1. The acquisition computer of the modality may need a reboot. Sometimes the DICOM services within the local workstation get hung up. The services can be restarted in the Windows Task Manager if you know what they are. However, these permissions are usually locked and only managed by the modality vendor. So instead, a simple reboot of the station should do the trick. Power off, power on. But, big but. You must be sure the images are saved and will not be lost upon reboot. If you don't know this, call the biomedical engineer or the MRI vendor's field service engineer. If the reboot didn't resolve the issue, proceed to the next step. 2. The modality is not connected to the network. Sometimes this is as simple as an unplugged network cable. Be sure to check behind the acquisition computer. Ensure the Ethernet cable is properly plugged in. Then, run a Windows command prompt on the computer. Perform a network ping of the PAX server by entering the word ping, followed by the IP address. If the network ping fails, then there may be a network issue. Contact your network administrator for further troubleshooting. If there is a valid network connection but sending fails, proceed to the next step. 3. The modality is not connected to the PAX server. In order for DICOM images to be stored from a modality to PAX, the modality must have DICOM connectivity to the PAX server, not just a network connection, but a DICOM association. If not, image transmission will fail. To test this connection, you can perform a DICOM C echo. This button is usually found in the configuration UI of the MR software. You can also initiate the C-Echo from your PAX to the modality instead. The C-Echo confirms there is not only a valid network connection, but a valid DICOM connection. The modality must know who the PAX is, and the PAX must know who the modality is. They must have each other's name and address, otherwise known as AE title, IP address, and port. If any of these three values have been recently changed, the DICOM C-Echo will fail. If there is a valid DICOM connection, but you still cannot store to PAX, proceed to the next step. 4. The IP address on the modality was changed. 
this is pretty common where the computer components connected to the MR modality have been changed, swapped, or upgraded. If techs were experiencing problems with the software, the vendor could have replaced the network interface card, or even the whole computer. In some cases, resetting or upgrading the software could erase the current configuration. What's so important about the current configuration? Well, the MR's AE title, port, and IP address must remain constant for the PACs to accept images from it. Any of these changes could have caused the MR to lose its static IP address. It could have defaulted to DHCP. If another IP address was assigned to the MR, it will not connect to the PACs. But in this scenario, the text said the system was working earlier today, so perhaps this isn't the issue. Let's move on. 5. The PAX server is down or not responding. If the PAX server is down or offline, images will not be able to be stored from any modality. In some cases, the DICOM server may be online, but the storage servers could be experiencing issues, causing storage failures. In other words, the part of the PAX responsible for receiving DICOM images can still actively receive images. However, there may be internal storage issues within the PAX that causes the images not to be viewable in the PAX viewer, leading to complaints from the end users that no images were ever stored. This would rule out the modality being the root of the problem. You may test this theory from the modality by sending the same images from the MR to an alternate DICOM destination, such as a VNA, 3D post-processing application, or a backup PAX. If the images become available in the alternate system, then perhaps the problem is the PAX. Also test if other modalities can send to PAX. Pro tip, check the error logs on your PAX to look for the exact reason why transfers failed. If you can't find anything wrong with the PAX, then proceed to the next step. 6. The PAX network was temporarily down or experiencing packet loss. For images to be transmitted, the connection should not be interrupted. If the network was temporarily down during transfer, or if there was packet loss, the images could have been corrupted. This doesn't always happen, but it is possible. The corrupt images could have transferred over but become unviewable or unavailable in the PAX software. If this is the case, delete the images in PAX, then resend from the modality. But, big but again, make sure the original copy is still available on the modality to resend before deleting any patient data. Also confirm with your site's policy and procedures before any deletion. If the resend doesn't work, try the next step. At this point, you may have nailed the issue and resolved it. Easy fix. Time to go home and enjoy the weekend. Not for everyone, though. Stick around to get into more complex troubleshooting. Like and subscribe if you find this content helpful. Also, leave a comment below if you want more of this type of content. Or if you have alternate solutions. We'd love to hear from you experts. Visit our website, paxbootcamp.com, for more free training. 7. The DICOM router is down and not functioning properly. Some organizations use a DICOM router in between the modality and PACs. Routers can be used for several reasons. To modify DICOM tags on transfer, to load balance, to block certain image types, to send certain images to different destinations based on the file type or metadata. Be sure the DICOM router is online and make sure there were no recent changes to the rules. Be sure additions of new rules do not affect previous rules. Also, be sure there's no connection issue between the router and PAX. Don't use the DICOM router. Next. 8. Firewall Issues Though not a common issue for internal networks, it's possible the networking team could have made a change to the firewall settings. Confirm with the appropriate team that there is no firewall blocking any of the ports. Nine. The DICOM tags on the images are incorrect or incomplete. It is possible the metadata on the DICOM tags for this particular study could be invalid. Perhaps there was a change to the original order on RIS, which led to invalid data being written onto the DICOM tags. You'd have to run the images through a DICOM validator to confirm, or perhaps find this from the error logs on the PACs. Not the issue? Let's try the next step. 10. 
The DICOM images are not supported. How could this be? All previous images were sent today. Well, sometimes the setting to change the file type of the image could be a simple button press in the MR software UI. For example, MR images are usually stored as something called an MR image storage SOP. Most packs can store and view these. But if the setting was accidentally changed to the enhanced MR image storage SOP, then you've got yourself a problem. Older packs may not be able to store or view this class of images. There were no changes to the SOP class? I guess we're not done. Let's look at a bonus step 11. Bonus reason, there is already a study in there with the same SOP instance UID. If there is already an image in the packs with the same SOP instance UID, sometimes the new image cannot be stored. This could happen if the images were sent to the packs more than once with the same UID. This really depends on your pack setting. Most packs just accept the newer images and replace the older ones. Some packs ignore the duplicates but accept new images that come in the second time. Then, some packs are just plain stubborn. They won't accept any images at all, even if new images are included in the set. Some packs may block duplicates on a study instance UID level instead of the SOP instance UID level. In other words, it will block the whole study and not just the duplicate images. You don't want this setting enabled on your packs, that's for sure. You may want to instead allow your packs to update the existing images if the same are sent in again. Confirm with your organizational policies before making this change. Important note to save time. Sometimes you don't have to go through this whole serial step-by-step -step process. Sometimes the reason for failure may pop up as an error on either the modality or the packs. If you can't find the reason in the UI, you may be able to dig into the logs of both sender and receiver. For more advanced professionals, this is the preferred method, instead of ruling out each of the possibilities one by one. Okay, that's it for now, guys. Hopefully, we've helped you resolve the issue. There could be many more possibilities, but we'll dig into those another time. Remember, start with the basic stuff, then gradually work your way through the more complex scenarios. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Have an interesting troubleshooting experience to share? Let us know down below in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and visit PaxBootCamp.com. Our website, PaxBootCamp.com, provides an imaging informatics study guide and a practice exam for those of you interested in taking the CIIP board exam. Finding a technical resource who is perfectly matched to the needs of the company is challenging for the majority of medical institutions due to the significant variation in requirements for PAX administrator roles. The position calls for in-depth radiological expertise, clinical knowledge, understanding of medical terminology, as well as strong IT abilities. PAX Bootcamp offers a premium imaging informatics professional study guide a shortened summary of the ABII course content topics. This Imaging Informatics Professional Study Guide has been approved by the American Society of Radiologic Technologists for 3.5 hours of Category A continuing education credits. Like, subscribe, and comment below if you want to see more of this type of content.